Hello and welcome to a brand new adventure. So today we've ventured up into Cumbria for the first time for me anyway. And I'm joined by the fantastic Martin Zero once again. Now he's brought me to something that he wants to see today. And it's a very fascinating abandoned viaduct called the Bilar Viaduct. We think that's how it's pronounced, don't we? I think we? so, yeah, yeah. So the Bilar Viaduct. We're not from around these parts. We're not. <laughs> two, two different counties and we're in no man's land now. So we ventured up here today and we're about to head up into the moorland to look at the Bilar Viaduct, which was reputed to be the largest bridge in England at one point. But right now we're on what is known as the Merrygill Viaduct. And there's also the Podgill Viaduct a bit further down which we're going to look at first and then we're going to head up into the moorland and show you the Bila viaduct. So right behind me is what is known as Merry Gill Viaduct. And you can just see it there, how intact it is and how amazing it looks. Now these viaducts are very accessible. It's now a nature reserve and you can walk across through the whole stretch of line down this side. When we get to the Bilar viaduct, it's totally remote and in the middle of nowhere. But I'll just pan you around so you can see the remains of this one. And then we're going to head down to the Podgill viaduct. So when we get up towards the Bilar viaduct, I'll fill you in with a bit more information about this line when we get up there. But for now, let's take a look. What's it called, Martin, this box? A plate layer's hut. Plate layer's hut. I didn't know that. I'd have just called it a hut. Well, the railwayman's hut, but it's, I think it's the same thing, isn't it? Pretty much. It's right next to the signal box. So I'll show you the hut first. So here we have what is known as a plate layer's hut. This is where the railway's maintenance man would have been located. As you can see, this one is now a makeshift museum and it's dedicated to this railway line. It's got various pictures and bits of information all over the wall, including this one, which is a picture of the Merrygill signal box that was located just behind us. Okay, so let's go and take a look at the remains of the signal box just outside here. Now this was demolished many years ago, but it now lives on as a piece of abandoned history. And again, another picture of the signal box in its glory days. So what you can see here is the remains of the back wall of the signal box. And also you can just see the fireplace there that remains on the back wall. And there on the floor is what looks like the remains of an old railway buffer and other bits of railway memorabilia. And also right at the front is what appears to be some kind of inspection pit. Although it looks a little too close to the signal box. So could it have been a cable tunnel instead? And just ahead here is a bridge that carries an access road to the nearby Hartley Castle. I'm pretty sure that this is still in use today. So we've just reached the Podgill Viaduct, which is the second one, and it's the one nearest to T Bay or Kirkby Stephen, which is just round the corner. So we've reached that and we've got a nice little viewing area at the side. There's actually a path that runs down the side of it. So I'm going to take you around and show you now. And just check that out. Right behind me is the Podgill Viaduct and this one is much more impressive than the last one. It's a lot bigger for a start and a lot higher. As you can see behind me how beautiful that is. So like I said we've managed to get down the side of it which is really good. We can get a nice view of it. I don't know if you can see that from here but we've just read on a sign up there that this was actually widened to two tracks. So it was originally built as one. So what you're seeing on here you can see the divide or the join in the middle. You've got two different sides of the viaduct.
So after trekking through bog and marshland for about 40 minutes, we finally started to get close to the remains of the Bilar viaduct. Now you can just see there up on the hill, the remains of the signal box and the western abutment of the viaduct. Now just look at the size and the scale of that abutment there and all the stonework that's been used in its construction. It's also stood strong against the elements for over 160 years. Now let's take a look across the valley and you can just see the line of the viaduct there as it crosses to the other side on the eastern abutment. And also it's 15 pylons that supported the bridge. Now let me show you what the viaduct would have looked like as it spanned across the valley, all 347 yards of it, or 317 meters. And just down there in the valley, you've got the River Bilar, which has cut its way through the valley here over the many years. The bridge was completed in 1860, but I'm now going to show you a picture which is going to show its demolition. It was demolished in 1963. So I'm now going to match the picture up for you. And there you can see the viaduct, or half of it that's left standing in the middle of the valley. And the eastern side of it is now gone. Now as me and Martin made our way over to the western abutment to have a look, we spotted all these holes in the ground. Now these are what we think are rabbit holes, and they've destroyed all the track bed there. So I've got a feeling this track bed's not going to last much longer. Now the viaduct was built for the South Durham and Lancashire Railway, or later in its life it was known as the NER. And it ran from Barnard Castle all the way to Tea Bay in Cumbria. It cost a grand total of £31,630 to build the viaduct. And it's actually built on a slight curve and a gradient right across the valley there. The line was built to mainly transport goods, especially the iron and steel industry in Barrow and Furness. It also ran passenger services and excursions from the northeast all the way across to Blackpool and Morecambe. So as you can see behind me, we've got the amazing span across the valley there. And they've got the river Bilar just down the bottom as well. I say river, it's more like a, a brook or a stream. Now I'm told it was 196 feet high or 60 meters. And when it opened, it was apparently the tallest bridge in England at the time. And I think it was overtaken not long after that by another viaduct in Wales. But that was only a couple of feet higher than this one. Okay, so let's make our way over to the edge of the western abutment. And you can see where the viaduct joined there. And just down there is what remains of an old ladder or a rusty iron ladder that would have been part of the viaduct itself. Now the viaduct was made from wrought and cast iron and also included some wood in its construction. Now I'm also told that the viaduct was built and designed by the same team as the ill-fated Tay Bridge in Dundee. Right, so we just walked down the uh, valley here. So we're somewhere in the middle between the two abutments. So you've got the uh, east one just up there. And we've come down to these uh, pillars here, which would have been the stanchions that supported the iron girders that went up to the uh, viaduct some 200 feet above our heads up there. It's just weird to see these sat here, isn't it, Martin? Mm. I'll just take you a bit closer and you can see the uh, nuts there that have just been cut. And they uh, obviously just ripped it to pieces and then scrapped it, which is a big shame. I'll just show you, there's another one just here. It's got a weird piece of rock on top there. But there's another one just over there as well in the valley. We've got the stream probably, I don't know, 30, 40 feet below us down there. And that would have been right, well, that would have been the deepest point in the valley. So we're not sure what this is, we've just stumbled across it in the field, right in the middle of the viaduct. Definitely looks like iron to me. So we're presuming it is viaduct related. It's right in between the two abutments here but again you can't get the uh, distance down there you can't gauge it but it's really steep down there it's a sheer drop but you can just see the uh, stone pillar through there on the other side now this 
would have probably been another stanchion here. You can see the iron bar sticking out there. So these obviously went deep into the ground. Yeah, down there is the river Bila, or I'd say it's more like a stream, but I think it is actually a river. But just look at the height on that. It's hard to gauge it on this camera, but you're talking 200 feet above our heads, right across this valley here. remains of the Bila signal box. Now I don't think this was the original signal box because if you look on the old maps the signal box was much closer to the edge of the viaduct. And I think this must have been a much later addition. Now let's have a look through this door and see if we can see anything inside. It does look like the roof's collapsed in but you can clearly see some of the features in there. I'm also told that there would have been three signalmen present in this box at all times with the fire going 24 hours a day to keep them warm. Now I'm just going to show you a picture now. This is a snowdrift that happened many years ago. And as you can see how deep that snow is, it completely covered the line and it took many men many days to dig all that snow out. All the supplies for the signal box were apparently delivered via trains. So things like coal for the fire, water and food would have been delivered daily. Now just as we were filming this section here, Martin commented, Hasn't the weather been great? It hasn't rained at all. And then just look at those clouds in the distance. It looks like rain is on its way. So let's have a look inside this uh, old signal box. It's definitely got a, a basement level down there. There's the door that I was stood at earlier and a second level and you can just see the fireplace just up there in the chimney above it. But yeah, there's trees inside here now and uh, all the floors have obviously gone through in the roof. Yeah, nothing much to see really. All very fascinating though and there's this uh, little hatch down the front here which I'm presuming would be for all the cables to come out of the, or the lever cables to come out. watching please subscribe to the channel for free by clicking the logo here and click subscribe like the video and any comments you have down below if you would like to support the channel or would like to make a donation there are links in the description below and finally a big thank you to our existing supporters of the channel see you on the next adventure